everyone. My name is Pat Patricia Valdovinos. I'm a librarian for the Multilingual Collections Department, and I am joined today by my coworker, Stephen Kilgore, library assistant in the cataloging department. We are here to introduce today's LA Made program, Bailey Sarian, Murder, Mystery, and Makeup. We want to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you virtually. LMA focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles, highlighting the immense, art immense artistic and pr performance talents that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you would like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events. And for specifically our LA Made programs, visit lapl.org slash LA Made. Our website also has blog posts that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. Also, do not miss our next LA Made program on Thursday, April 1st at 4 p.m. as we welcome Los Angeles's, Los Angeles's new, newly appointed poet, poet laureate, Lynn Thompson. Hear her poetry and learn about her upcoming work and activities. Then on Thursday, April 9th at 4 p.m., join us to welcome the LA Roller Girls. The LA Roller Girls USA Roller Sports Certified Instructors are excited to give a virtual demonstration of roller dance skating to bring awareness to the community about the benefits of roller skating. They'll have you roll, rolling in no time. Now for what we have been waiting for. I am very excited to introduce LA's MADE program. Joining us today is Bailey, Bailey Serion with over 4 million sub subscribers on YouTube. Bailey is the host of her YouTube series, Murder, Mystery and Makeup, which uploads on Mondays. Welcome, Bailey Sarion. Yay! Hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> it's so Thank nice you. to have you here, Bailey. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I love the library. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. We love, you back. we love you back. You have a huge library following. So we are really honored and just excited to have you here. Um, and so let's get started. Are you, right? are you ready, Stephen? I'm ready. Are you ready, Bailey? <laughs> All right. So we have uh, for our first question is, what inspired you to combine makeup with storytelling? And did you grow up with storytelling? Okay. So I did not grow up with storytelling. I mean, of course, I like to talk, <laughs> gossip and whatnot, like you know. And but I've been interested in true crime for like as long as I can remember. My mom was a nine one one dispatcher, and I used to go to work with her and like sit in and listen, which probably wasn't appropriate at the time, but we laugh about it now. <laughs> um, but I would go and I would sit in, I would listen. It was just like fascinating to me. Um, really, I don't know, I'm such a curious person. Mm. So I've just carried that all throughout my life. I mean, like many people, I'm so interested in anything and everything true crime related. And then I was making YouTube videos and I was like, you know what? I really wanna talk about this case that I've been following. It was the Chris Watts case. I was like heavily invested in it. And I was like, I don't have anyone to talk to about it with because no one in my family like cares about it like I do. So I was like, I'm just gonna make a video and like talk about it and everything I learned and then just do my makeup because I just <laughs> like keep myself busy. And um, after that first upload, I was kind of nervous. I was like, I don't know how this is gonna be received. But after that first upload, like I got a, like 60,000 views and I was like, oh, like this is <laughs> control. Like, oh, that's a lot. So I was like, let me try it again and see like if this is a thing. And then I just kept going. I kept trying it, trying it. Here I am still trying it. And it's <laughs> <laughs> like and it's got its audience. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm onto something. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's as someone who doesn't follow murder or it was just it was just it scares the death out of me. Uh, you have such an like inviting and engaging voice and storytelling way that I'm like, wow. So, yes. Thank you. I mean, I just try to approach it in a way where it's like when you're sitting down and talking to your friends, how do you talk? You know, like that's what it is. I'm just sitting and I'm talking to my friends. We're all your friends. You yeah. can't. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So question two, you've done several episodes on cults. I was wondering, why do you think Los Angeles seems to be so cult prone? And have you ever thought of doing an episode on Krishna Venta, leader of the WKFL Wisdom, Knowledge, Faith and Love cult in the San Fernando Valley in the 1950s, who was murdered by a suicide bomb. 
So I actually like am not familiar with that cult at all. But when I heard about it, I was like, okay, I'm in. Like I need to learn anything and everything about this because it's right up my alley. I am fascinated by cults. Like they are just so, <laughs> you know, like they're just like, what is going on? But I don't know why Los Angeles seems to be prime area for cults, serial killers, anything and everything seems to at least pass through Los Angeles at some point. Um, I always like ask my parents, like, how did, cause in, when they were growing up, they grew up in Los Angeles. So I was like, how did you guys make it out without, you know, coming across a serial killer or getting involved in a cult? Because like, it was all happening around their upbringing. And I don't know what's going on over there. It's like, must be something in the water. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Right. <laughs> don't drink the water, y'all. Don't drink the water. Yeah. It is. All right. So, uh, and then I also want to remind our viewers that you can submit your questions in the comments and chat. I think we've already mentioned that um, beforehand. But yeah, if you have questions for Bailey, please throw them in the chat or comment, depending on what platform you're on. I don't remember which one belongs to which. So question number three, do you see, uh, do you use the Los Angeles Public Library, other libraries for research? And if so, what resources are your favorite? For example, do you use photo collections and all that? Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm the one who's like, ah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I use the library to, cause well, first when like COVID started to happen, I didn't realize that you could check out eBooks. And like, this was groundbreaking to me because I was like, this makes it so much easier now that the libraries are all closed. But I would always go to the libraries and look for any any book on the topic that I was researching about. But most of all, when I first started doing my YouTube channel, like I didn't have internet or anything at my house. So I would always go to the library and just use the internet there, the Wi-Fi. I would use it to print any of the documents I needed. I would sit there and edit. I mean, the library was there for me when like, you know, nothing, nothing was. <laughs> like I was just always ending up at the library. So yeah, I mean, I use it mainly for eBooks now, um, but I haven't really ventured too much in like looking into documents and stuff. I get a little intimidated. Why? Is it I just don't know. It's just like, I don't know what, what I'm looking for sometimes or like how to use the system. I need someone to teach me, but I feel like whenever I've gone to the library, it's always too busy and I'm like, nah, I don't want to bug anyone. So then I just like, <laughs> bug us, bug us. Yeah. Word, no, yes. Uh, Anytime we are always here to help as my librarian uh, cap on. I'm like, no, we love these questions. And I think Stevie used to work for the photo collection, didn't you? I used to work for uh, inter, uh, Interlibrary Loan and used to do the, uh, get articles and stuff for people. And mm -hmm. then in special collections, I worked with the menus, which have stories on their own. Yeah. Which we we uh we are we will wait for you to come and visit us. We have like we have special collections at LEPL and all these great stuff, but all yeah, right. you come down and get a little lesson on how to like fully use everything. <laughs> we are excited. I think our ebook collection is one of the biggest things, especially during COVID, that we've realized. Like we've had to buy a bunch of per, like purchase a huge amounts of like ebooks and audiobooks. So um uh yeah, I'm glad that you use those. I love that. I'm like, hello, does anyone know that there's like free books on the website? Like, why is no one using this? <laughs> I love yes, that. I promote it. All right. Uh, and free movies, and you can take classes as well. And music, you can download five. Like Free Goal allows you five free music downloads. I get a reminder every week now. Five free music downloads. They have classes. Hold on, I need to write this down. They have yeah, we got Lynda.com for free. Like New York Times, you don't got to pay for it. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. So. There. <laughs> All right, Stephen. I think it's up. Your your questions up next. Okay. Uh, four, has there been any story that has completely freaked you out or changed you? Um, I would say one of the, the, a story that's definitely freaked me out was the toy box killers or killer. He was down in, um, truth or consequences, New Mexico, I think it is. And he, I can't even, I probably can't even verbalize it, what he did, because it's just so, it's just, <laughs> it was a lot and that one, he made like an audio recording and he would kidnap women and like lock them up and then play this audio recording to them. And it was just, you can listen to it and it's the, just disturbing. It's just, 
I just, I just, I just, I can't. <laughs> After that one, I was like, okay, I think I need a break for a little bit. And <laughs> it was like, it was just too much. I don't understand how some people could be so dark. It's just, it's just a lot. Dark <laughs> is even putting it lightly. Jeez. So yeah. you listened to, like, you, I mean, I, like, you listened to these recordings? Yeah. Well, I just listened to like um, little snippets of it because again, it was just, it was heavy. And I was like, I'm just going to skim. I get, it. I get the gist of it. I don't need to hear the whole thing, you know? And then I try to always get like court documents and stuff. And then sometimes they'll um, give you like photos and whatnot. And it was just, wow. It was, it was a, this person was sick. This person was very sick. So, I have a follow up question, if you don't mind, for that. Do, how do you, because uh, these, I'm assuming these audio recordings and these pictures are graphic. So it, do you have to, like, do you have to, is it, how's your process with obtaining these things? Is there, um, how easy is it for you to grab them and all that? So, I mean, you can go to the local courts, like online, and you could um, put in them a Freedom of Information Act. And you could request to get all the documents related to a case. Or sometimes you could just find the court documents directly through diff like their websites. Um, it's a bit of a challenge. And it's it's been like, I've just been kind of learning how to do it along the way. But it only costs like 10 cents, you know, per, per packet or whatever. And yeah, it'll give you the whole rundown, like everything that was said in court. Sometimes there'll be photos, sometimes there won't be. Um, it really just depends on where it took place and what they put in um, the discovery is what they call it. Cool. Yeah, because I, I would um, assume that sometimes it's difficult, especially with those like, I don't know, those audio. But I'm assuming it's like open to all. Right. So I forget. That. Yeah. I mean, there's some stuff that's obviously not open to all. They keep it like on lockdown. But with the toy box one, I don't even I don't know where the audio came from. It was like a transcript. And then someone leaked the tapes and like you can find it if you dig deep enough. And I and I found it and I was like, well, I regret this. And I <laughs> I like, I yeah, I was like, now I know why they didn't want anyone to listen to it. They're doing us a favor. OK, <laughs> Man, it's one of those things that you're like, I shouldn't watch it, but I'm curious. And then you find yourself in a rabbit. I, yeah, yeah. I've, I've learned to like not look at pictures and stuff because that's the stuff that will really just ruin you. Um, and I don't I don't want that, you know, so I don't even go looking anymore. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> I'll read it. But I now make a little image in my mind. But that's all I need. <laughs> Man, I give you props that I. Oh, God. All right. So uh, this is actually one of my favorite questions that me and Steven came up with, because recently, I, well, I think like three or four videos ago, you mentioned librarians in your video. And so <laughs> yeah. if I remember correctly, you said, you know, like the old school librarians with glasses and the crunchy bangs, the new librarians are cool. <laughs> so <laughs> we need more clarification on the word crunchy. And also, can you share with us your first experience with a librarian? And uh, did you, I think you answered this a little bit, but I'll ask it anyways. Did you grow up using libraries? So um, I meant that librarians used to have crunchy bangs <laughs> in like the late 90s, early 2000s. It was a very <laughs> specific look. It was like, you know, it was like all the Aquanet. It was just crunchy. And then like it was round. And then they like, like every librarian had glasses. This is what I remember growing up at my library. <laughs> a very specific look. Like they all had that look. And it was the Jody Arias case. I had talked about it because she showed up to court. She looked just like the librarians. I was like, that's it. That's the look. And um, but now librarians are cool. <laughs> I was like, I don't want them mad at me for this. I need to like make up for it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, growing up in elementary school, you know, we would always go to the library and it was like the most exciting day ever. And or even on the weekends, my parents would take us to the library and allow us to check out like two, three books. And it was just like the most exciting day when you got to go check out a new book. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I always used the library. It helped me tremendously when it came to my YouTube channel. Um, it helped me with like all the research, but most of all the, the Wi-Fi, a quiet place to work, um, and just all the resources you need when making content for what I do. So <laughs> the library is like, it's just, it's like a little safe space. I love it there. There's just something about the atmosphere and how it smells. 
It just <laughs> makes me like want to work. I love it. I love the smell of library books. It's just oh. like, it's such a, it takes me back to being a kid. <laughs> it's a very specific smell, but I love it. It is a very specific smell. I was like, wait a minute, do you like the library book smells or the library? Well, I guess it depends on what library you go to. I mean, not. I mean, yeah. we we were always at library, so I guess that makes sense. But I really like that picture because she was even. I think was she wearing a cardigan too? There's a joke amongst us that we have our sensible. Well, we have our sensible shoes and our cardigan. That's how you you know you've officially made it into the library world. And I love it. It's a look. It is. <laughs> and a teacup. Oh, a tea cup, yes, with our tea. I'm trying to think. And our All right. Okay. So question six, have you ever thought about incorporating murders that incorporate librarians into one of your episodes? I mean, of course, but I haven't come across anything yet that like is targets librarians. But if I do, I wouldn't steer away, <laughs> I guess. Do it. Do Wait, see. Yeah, I think Stevie does have stories. Do, don't you know any stories of it? Um, I was looking for some. It's just more that I, I think it's more the seeing it in the movies and stuff like Foul Play with Goldie Hawn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh that. I was being a murder. Wait, yeah. Um, all right. So, so how do you plan your makeup look or palette? Do you, the murders inspire the type of look you will do or um, any of that sort? No, it's usually I just, a lot of people think I like pre-plan based off the story and whatnot. And it's not that at all. It's like a lot of the times I'll spend so much time researching the story. And then when I come to filming, I'm just like, I sit down and I'm like, I want to do red today. And then that's <laughs> all the planning I do. <laughs> like, And I just start going and I hope for the best, really. So it's not really so much about the makeup. It's more about the story. If anything, the makeup's just kind of keeping myself busy and then giving people something to watch. Yeah. Sort of like a stream of consciousness kind of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like I just kind of do it mindlessly sometimes. I just am going and it's like, I'm getting ready for my day. So I'm, you know, let me just tell you a story at the same time. <laughs> Is there ever a time you just completely as someone who also does makeup, shocker, right? Uh, is there ever a time you're like, I, you have to like wash your face off because you're like, I can't, and you have to start the process over? Or do you commit? You're like, well, I'm going to commit. There's been one murder mystery <laughs> makeup where I actually wiped it off because I was like, this is a mess. And I said it in the video. I was like, I think this is the first time. But normally I just commit. <laughs> and I'm like, even if I'm not like fully happy, I'll make it to where I'm happy. I just keep going. Don't quit. <laughs> Don't quit. Make up, you know, washes off. So it is what it is. Man, yeah. There's definitely been times where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna wash it. I'm not even like you just get mad. You get mad oh. and you're like, I'm not, I'm I'm done. No, yeah, I've definitely had that happen when you have to go somewhere important and it's like you just oh, and it's like you do the big old liner and you're like, what happened? And <laughs> I hate that. I hate you're that. But, even, or your yeah. eyes watery. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been there. Such a rough life. Right? That's <laughs> My liner doesn't match. <laughs> All the way. You know, yeah. we do what we can. We do what we can. All right. Is Steven, I think it's a good okay, so question eight. Do you think your videos helped people during the pandemic lockdown? Because I know you have helped me. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Well, I I think my videos have helped because I see the comments and everyone says that I've helped. <laughs> so I guess so. I never really thought about it. I mean, my channel grew a lot when we went into lockdown. So I was assuming that everybody was just sitting and watching YouTube. But it I makes it makes me happy knowing that, like, you know, I'm giving people something to look forward to, even though it's dark, but I try not to make it that dark. <laughs> so I don't know. But yeah, I mean, everyone tells me that I've definitely helped and that's nice. I'm glad I can help in some way. Yeah, you make murder, you make murder fun. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> we laugh or get our nervous giggle. I know, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it. it's true. It, as someone who was like, nah, I don't mess. Well, the one story that I couldn't finish of yours was that like where the movie Invisible Man was based off of. Um, right. I think oh, mm -hmm. that was the one mo movie, one video of yours where I was like, I can't, I live alone. This is terrifying. I didn't finish. Oh, okay. 
I'm like, that one was pretty tame. But I mean, if you live alone, I could see how that would freak you I out. Don't, I, don't, like, I don't even know what, I didn't watch the movie. I I don't know what ended up happening, but it just freaked me out, the whole idea of it. So that was the only one. But all the other ones, as someone who doesn't like murder and mystery and the, you, yeah, I was very, you have definitely helped me even during COVID, so. You're um, but I do have a follow up. How have you, I mean, you've been giving back to so many people through your videos, but how, how have you been taking care of yourself? Like what's your self care? That's a great question. I feel like this last year was just such a hot mess. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, I, I can't, I, I'm going to skip uploads if I know like I need a break because I had a lot of deaths in my family as well and friends and it was just a lot. And there's, I felt this immense pressure to just keep uploading because the bigger you get, the more you're like, I have to keep going. And it's this pressure you put on yourself. So finally I got to a point where I was like, okay, like I have to take care of myself. Um, it's like, it's not that serious. It's just a video. Like I got, I have to take care of myself. So usually on the weeks that I take off, cause I skip one Monday a, a month. I, if I watch like a true crime documentary, I balance it out with like a comedy movie or something fun. And I just try to make sure that I'm not doing too much when it comes to the true crime. Cause beforehand I was listening to like all true crime podcasts, documentaries, movies, series. <laughs> Anything and everything was like true crime related. And then I was wondering why I was like getting depressed and stuff. You know? like, <laughs> so finally now I just had to like stop everything and like make sure that I am finding some kind of balance in all of this, you know, because it was just so it was get, it was a lot. It was a yeah. lot. So I just been learning along the way, like what works for me and making sure just to take breaks. I call it murder porn because there's like so much out there and it's like, you have to be aware of how much you're, you're taking in because it does mess with you. It messes with everybody. So it's like, make sure to find like a balance that, you know, if you're listening to some, something about murder, make sure to laugh yes. at something, you know? Yes. Too much of anything, right. Is can be harmful, right. It's the same thing with the news, right. A lot of us were watching the news like nonstop this whole year. And then at some point yeah. I got super addicted. I had to cut that off too. At some point, I was like, wow, this is okay. Yeah, same. It's like you get addicted to the upset and just all of it. Addicted to the negativity. It's really it's really bad. And then you don't realize it until you're like, oh, my God, everything out of my mouth is negative. Like, I need to take a breather. <laughs> you just become – well, I like, I struggle with this grumpiness. As a, I think people who know me, they're like, you're so chirpy. About, but I can get really grumpy. And so because of that repetitive, like – you're just in a cycle of like, I'm going to keep hearing the same thing over and over, which isn't the best. So I'm happy. Yeah. With you. yeah. I mean, it's, it was hard. This last year was just all negative news. I mean, how did anybody stay positive positive? and like going on social media would make you feel worse. Cause it seemed like everybody was thriving and you're <laughs> like, wait a minute. Like I'm not thriving. Like <laughs> wait, <laughs> you know, and it was just too much. So yeah, just remember you take breaks from everything is a good thing. Good reminder. Good reminder. All right. Uh, uh, Steven, do you, let's see, I'm going to look at the audience to see if uh, we have any questions. Look at you. It's the best one. So we have, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay. So we have one from Maria Novoa that says uh, she's a huge fan and says, do you memorize every story you talk about? Um, you don't appear to be reading the facts as you apply your makeup. Oh, thanks for watching Maria. Um, no. Well, yes and no. So I write out a whole script. It's like from start to finish the whole story. And then I usually have it with me um, on my desk. And I either am like referencing my script, or I'm just kind of telling you depending on if I did memorize it or not. Some stories, it's like, there's just too many characters and stuff. <laughs> not characters, people. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so it's like, I need help because I get everybody mixed up. So yeah, it just really depends on the story. Sometimes it's like, I just, I just know it and I just go. Um, but yeah, I always have a script on me. That's, how do you memorize it? Do you like, I don't know, like sit in your shower or like in bed and just like run through, I don't know. That's what I do to memorize things. <laughs> well, I guess it's not like me memorizing it word for word. Like I create this script that's just the story, but I don't necessarily have like uh, what I say in the video in the script. 
So okay. I always like put it into my own words. But a lot of the times when I do all my research and whatnot, I spend like three days watching any like documentaries or interviews and reading anything I can find about the story. And then with those three days, I just naturally catch on to the story and I could just kind of go, you know? That makes sense. But man, the names that you have to memorize, name, I would just be calling everyone the wrong name all the time. So I give you props. For <laughs> well, I mean, like you guys see the finished version behind the scenes. It takes me like th three to four hours to film. And it's just me wow. messing up everyone's names. I'm like, Tom, Tim, Timmy, Tom. <laughs> it's just a mess, but you know, I, I go, I learn. <laughs> That's me. I would have never known. I would have never known that you were like, oh, so there's a lot of bloopers. Are you ever going to release these bloopers? No, because I feel like the, the thing I'm talking about is very serious. And to add like me messing up them getting chopped up or something, yeah. you know, like <laughs> think this question now, <laughs> it wouldn't go so well. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we have one from, from Kelly Garcia, is this, um, who says, nail polish, Bailey, what is it? Is it one of, what is your favorite? I'm assuming she has, oh, that one. Hey, so this one, I did a collaboration with Loud Lacquer Nail Polishes. Um, and this was part of the Murder, Mystery, and Manny collection. It's called Red Rum. It's really pretty. It's like an orange oh, yeah. red. I love it. Yeah. I love red. The red orange is my favorite color. So I knew I had to do that. It's pretty. Your nails are so nice. I'm not even going to show. I'm a nail biter. So, but I know if I do like nail polish, it prevents me from biting. So I'm always trying to just paint my nails. That's so smart. I had to knock that off because of COVID. It freaked, I, COVID freaked me out. The nail biting or the, yes. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. There do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> someone told me if you rub garlic on them like a mother's maiden whatever they like if you rub garlic on it you won't well first they'll grow stronger and then you won't bite them because well i'm assuming they think you don't like garlic but oh, right i've heard that or like vinegar oh, i still throw it yeah man all right so uh jillian i believe her name what has been your favorite murder to research and share um favorite. Hmm. I think the one that's been the most interesting forever and always is Ed Gein. I don't know if any of you are familiar, but Ed was a special kind of human. Like I have yet to come across anyone who is like him. So have you seen like Silence of the Lambs? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, what's his name? The guy who uh, wants to wear the skin? Uh huh. So that's who like, Ed was, that was, that character was based off of Ed. Like he would uh, steal bodies from graves, take their skin off, oh sew them together and create like his own costume. He would make lampshades. He made chairs, picture frame, you name it. He made it out of skin. And let me tell you, I have not found or come across a story where anyone else has done that. And it's just like, well, like that's just a different level of like, he yeah. was different. <laughs> like he was different. He was different. <laughs> Which is the comfort, right? The comfort of, that someone has with these parts of other and that's and he was yeah. crafty and he was like making his own outfit. Like, what was he doing? You know, I have so many questions and no answers. Man, that is very true. All right. Uh another question is by Amanda. What unsolved case would you like to? Your lifetime, and which are the most what? Which are you most curious about? Ooh, I do get asked this a lot, and I always want to say like John Benet Ramsey. I think we all would like some closure on that case. Like, what really happened? There's so many theories out there. Um, yeah, <laughs> like that one. I think I would like to know what happened, but I don't think we ever will know. And then, what was the second part of that question? I'm sorry. Which, which are you most curious about? Just case in general? Uh, what unsolved case would you like? Uh, yeah, let's bring it up again. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, which are you most curious about? I'll bet yes, the case, yeah. Maybe like John Bonet. I think just because, again, there's so many unanswered questions, there's so many theories. 
But then if you want to get into like conspiracies, I would love to know what's going on in like Area 51 or whatever. I would like someone to just break in, get a camera, like let's see what's up, what's going on. <laughs> I, really know what's going on over there. I think we all do. Well, yeah, that's what I was like. How do you not fall? Because I'm sure there's a lot of conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. I can talk conspiracy theories on a lot of these murders, right? So how do you do you like read upon all these conspiracy theories as well? Or how do you not like get sucked into those again? Well, oh, sorry. Um, I didn't, that was my chair, by the way. I would didn't fart. So <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So I was, I've been researching or working on the John Benet Ramsey case for like a couple of months now. And I had to take a break because there are so many theories, conspiracy theories, suggestions, whatever you want to call it. There's a ton of them out there. And it was almost just like so overwhelming that I just need to take a break. But normally I just try to get the facts first and then I'll go read what other people are saying um, besides that, because it can all just get mixed together. And that's when it becomes just a hot mess. And that's what happened with like the John Bonet one. It's just like, you almost don't even know what the facts are because over the years, everybody has thrown their own opinions and theories and it's become just a mess, <laughs> a mess. Perfect way of saying it. All right, uh, Steven, do you want to read a uh, next question from our viewers? Do you have access to them? I do. Read them out. I think the next one is, they just posted it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you have such a natural storytelling style. Do you use prompts during your show to remember all the, the deets? And have you ever thought about becoming a te detective or PI? And that's from Annie Boagian. Uh, thank you. And yeah, like we had mentioned um, earlier, I use a script. Like I always have it with me on my table and whatnot. And I do reference that a lot because it's very easy to get lost in the whole story. So I do rely on that a lot. Um, and then, yeah, of course, I would love to be a detective or a PI. I think that'd be so fun. But in order to be a detective, you have to be a, a police officer first. And I don't want to do that. Like, I just want to skip and go to detective, which you can't do. But I would love to do that. <laughs> it makes sense. But like, you know. As, but I would love to be a private investigator. I think I would be really good at that. But I mean, we'll see. I feel like I change my mind every day. Because <laughs> I also would love to be a judge. I think that would be the best job ever. But that's a whole nother like 18, 20 years of school. <laughs> that is commitment. <laughs> I know. And I changed my mind too much. So You'd be, oh God, yes. Imagine like being in it like five years and like, I'm done. And then at that, that right. point, you're just like, I'm okay. I, oh God, yes. Right, that'd be so frustrating. Oh man, I think we skipped one. So the uh, Jeep Girly has said, has there been any story murder that has affected you emotionally, negatively, and that have given you nightmares? Yes, the toy box killer, that story definitely affected me because I listened to the, the, <laughs> the, the what was it the voice the voice memo yeah I listened to that and I shouldn't have done that <laughs> and I think in the beginning of my murder mystery and makeup series I was just kind of like deep diving and looking at all the pictures and all the videos and everything and then I realized like that was affecting me negatively like looking at crime scene photos that I don't need to look at that it's not going to help better like help me better tell the story. So I realized like, okay, as much as I sometimes wanna look, it's just best if I don't. So I now just don't even look at photos. Um, I just try to kind of create some separation because yeah, sometimes you'll see something or hear it and it just messes you up. And that's when I know like, okay, I went too far. Got to back it up now. <laughs> but I've learned to create boundaries, <laughs> what I'm saying. Did any of them have, have they embedded your night time routine like your nightmares i guess that's where i'm curious too have you have you ever woken up from a nightmare that sounds like pretty heartless but no <laughs> like, I'm, I well so that's <laughs> yeah no i mean sometimes you know it doesn't have, yeah yeah um, okay so i'm trying uh, to find okay so someone here is asking what's your process for creating your video scripts and what's the best video editing software that you use also you're always welcome to book a library oh yeah see I'm an interlibrary loan library. You could read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for creating my video scripts, 
I usually just kind of start. So mm, it really depends. So I have like a list of like topics I want to talk about or serial killers or whatever. And I usually go there and I just start Googling and I go from there and I look for a story that really catches my interest. And then I try and find every an article, every documentary, interview, book, whatever I can. And then I just kind of like compile it into one place. Then I go through it all and I start kind of just creating a story from start to finish. So I always like to start with like the background of who I'm talking about, where they grew up, how they grew up, and then go into their story. Um, that's what works for me. It usually takes about two to three days to do like the full research, depending on how much information is available. And then I use um, the software Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. Um, I used to use iMovie for a long time because it, was, it came like on my computer and it worked. Final Cut Pro gives you a little bit more options as far as you know the editing goes but my editing is so basic i honestly could just do it on iMovie <laughs> um, but yeah so i use final cut pro and yeah cool and um we do i think we do have videos on how to use final cut pro through linda so use your library honing in the library resources again also um i did have a follow-up question with that one um have you ever discovered something or like a news story based on like a I was going to call them characters again, a person, like a side person's, I don't know if I'm making sense. Like you're investigating someone and then someone else pops up and then you've come to learn about them. Has that ever happened? And what yeah. story or what case? I'm sorry. I keep cutting you off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I've been working on this story. It's not done yet. It's called Bible John. And um, so it's about the serial killer that was out in, I want to say Scotland, but he would go to a local club and pick up women there. And then he would like recite the Bible and then he would kill people. But then it led into like this other person named Peter Tobin, I believe it is, who they believed was Bible John, but they're not sure. But their stories kind of cross and either they work together or they are the same person or uh, they're not like connected. It's just kind of turned into this whole, I didn't mean for it to cross, it just kind of crossed. <laughs> so I've been working on that. And yeah, really, really. Interesting. So I that's religion always seems to play a big part in a lot of these serial killers, which is really sad. Yeah. And so has this, the, is this the first time that it's ever happened? Like this one story or has it? Yeah, no, that's like the only time it's happened. Hmm. That is interesting. I, well, yeah, that's a whole like theme all in itself. All right, uh, Stephen, do you want to read a question? I can't. There's so many questions coming in. If you have any questions, please feel free to jump in. So we'll. Try are there to any cases? I'm oh, sorry. Are there any cases that suck that that suck with you? Like, sorry. are there any victims that stuck with you? I, oh, I, does, that, does that make sense? Are there yeah. any that stuck with you? Like, are there any victims that stuck with you? And that's from Alina for for a Gino. Hmm. I would say the like one case I, I think about all the time is um, I did a story about Rocky Myers and how he was wrongly convicted of, of murder. And he's been sitting on death row in Alabama for like 20 something years. He's like it's proven that he was wrongly convicted, but the legal system there doesn't want to do anything about it. He is um, I guess he has he's. He's like, it's just everybody gave up on him. And um, it's just the saddest story. It, 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 like, and there's so many stories just like his, especially in Alabama, where people are wrongly convicted, they're put on death row, and then that's it. Like nobody cares. And it's just, it's heartbreaking because there's like nothing you could do about it. And that one, I think about it all the time. I've been in talks with this attorney and whatnot, trying to like help them out. I attached like a petition onto that video I did, hoping to get signatures so we can get them out. But we reached like all of the signatures needed and it just pretty much falls on the mayor who just doesn't want to do anything. And it's just like, it's, it's just really sad. It's so sad. Dang. Yeah. That is that. Yeah. See, the, I think what's cool about your cases is I think you bring you shed 
you you bring to light a lot of cases that a lot of us wouldn't know about. And I think that's how it gets. Like, I definitely learn a lot about like circumstances that are even happening now and how unjust some, you know, systems are. And so I, I definitely think that's a, you're doing a creative way of keeping us informed. So. Yeah. And it makes me, it kind of, again, I feel a lot of pressure sometimes because it's like, there's so many stories like that. And of course, like I want to, can talk about it as many people as I can, you know, and it makes me always just feel like I carry, I just put a lot of pressure on myself to like, I have to save them. And it's like, but then you realize how slow the justice system is, or just how some people, some, some states just don't care. And like, that is frustrating, because it makes you feel so powerless. And uh, it's just, I hate it all. <laughs> <laughs> These keep me up at night because it is so frustrating. And they're so like, I think there's a difference between a case like a year's past, whereas one that's happening now. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, can, I can, yes, yeah. Now I'm like lost for words because I, my mind is going in circles now. All right, so <laughs> go ahead. <clears throat> and then we have a question by Violet. Oh, right there. Um, okay. <laughs> I think we answered that one, right? Yeah. So I so Violet Hart asks, I'm curious why certain words are always bleeped in your posts. Um, can you not say those things for some reason? So on Facebook, they are every word you can think of, even if it's not a curse word, is bleeped because Facebook is super, um, they're very strict. And unfortunately, if I'm going to post the videos on their platform, I have to play by their rules. So like everything is bleeped. But if you want to see an unbleeped version, you can go over to my YouTube channel. The videos are like twice as long on my YouTube and they're, they're not bleeped. I just leave it. I'm like, whatever. I'll take that. <laughs> but on Facebook, they'll like take down your whole page or whatever. And it's so frustrating because some of the words I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> You're like, you want to fight. Let's fight. Yeah. Um, that's Bailey's uh, YouTube page. So if you want to give it, check it out. All right. Uh, and then I know we have her Instagram handle somewhere too. So she's on Instagram. I think Twitter. She's on all the social medias, I believe. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Let's find more questions. Uh, have you read the series of books called Spellman Files? I think, well, but I think that's a comment and a question. No, I haven't. I'll, let me take a note. Book recommendations. Okay. Um, Stephen, are you finding any? There's, there's a uh, spell. So, are there any specific? Wait, ah, so as they come in, they move. So we're 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 getting our lives together here, y'all. Uh, are there any specific stories you're purposely avoiding covering, and why? I purposely avoid anything that um, involves a lot of kids. I have to draw a line somewhere, you know, like I already feel, I mean, putting on makeup and talking about murder is already questionable. I really don't feel good about talking about kids, like, you know, being involved and putting on makeup. It just feels like too much. So yeah, I avoid anything that has to do with a lot of kids, which everyone wants to recommend cases that involves a lot of kids. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna overlook those. I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna just avoid those. Reminders. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think they're, I think you developing boundaries is because also you're a huge, well, and you're an influencer, right? One would call you. And so I think the boundaries, especially with social media plays a weird, there's a weird weirdness that happens, right? I think even us as, and so I think I'm glad to hear that you are developing boundaries with us, right? So. Yeah, you have to, you have to set a line somewhere. You can't just like give everything these people you have to keep some to yourself what's important to you and stick with that so yeah all right so one of the questions is by emily appleton and how do you deal with criticism pushback to your videos um i okay so that one's always tricky because i think a lot of people it's <laughs> so um a lot of people say like just to ignore it. That's the only thing you can do, but it's the most frustrating answer because you're like I can't just ignore it, okay? Like this like I care about <laughs> my videos and stuff and my YouTube and my community and like I want to hear what people say, but there's a difference between like constructive criticism and then people just being freaking rude for no reason. And it's like I've learned to just I've been learning to just stop looking and stop reading it. 
I spend about an hour um, when the video goes live on my YouTube, I spend about an hour like engaging with the comment section, like my community and whatnot. And then after that, I just can't go back because it's just, you can't, <laughs> you have, it's not good. Mean comments, rude comments, no matter who you are, how big you are, it's going to hurt your feelings. It hurts everybody's feelings. And if like, and there's nothing you can do. So mm -hmm. the only thing you can do is just ignore it, which drives me nuts, but that's all you can do. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The one warning, never read the comments. You're brave. You're brave. I mean, well, you have to, right? You have to engage with people, but. Yeah, so I only give myself like an hour when the video goes live. I mean, sometimes I go back, but I'm trying again to like cut it off and make sure I follow it because it will mess with you, especially if I'm in one of those moods. Ooh, it will get to me and then I'll spiral and be like, well, I'm the worst. Like, oh. <laughs> same, okay. same. I have a question from Maria Novoa. Do you think there would ever be a collaboration between you and the ladies from My Favorite Murder? Oh, I get asked that all the time. I've I've never talked to them. I mean, I'd be totally open to it, but I mean, I listen to them and I think that'd be great. So maybe I'll put it out into the atmosphere, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen and the universe will grant it. Um, do you, have you done any other collabs with any other one, any other one, any other person or? I did a video with Nancy Grace. Uh, she wanted oh. to promote a show that sh a new show she was doing. So we chatted a little bit about that and like a few random cases she's worked on. But other than that, no, um, I've definitely been approached about collaborations and whatnot, but I really don't know how to add in another person to what I do on my Monday uploads. Like, I just feel like behind the scenes, I already struggle enough trying to like do the makeup and like tell a story and not mess up. And like, how would I throw another person into that mix? Like, I don't think, I don't know how to do that. So maybe eventually, but. For now, I just kind of do my own thing. That's okay. And so I've been staring at your background this whole time. Are those real candles? No, they are battery, but don't ruin the illusion. I'm sorry. I've just been, <laughs> <laughs> I've been staring at them. They look really real. And then I'm always curious. I'm like, if they're real, how does she not like burn herself? I don't know. Yeah. Everyone's always like, oh my God, you're gonna start a fire. And I just don't say anything. So I'm like, yeah. Now I just killed it. <laughs> but also, like, I just picture you like trying to light one. Like, how, do you start from the bottom up or top? Like, how do you I not know. catch fire yourself? You know, like, but now I'm. Yeah. Like, well, there's this remote. I go like this, boom. So they're all connected. No, we're having a conversation about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Magic candles. Uh -huh. Wow. All right. Uh, so, do you have a favorite true crime show? Oh my God. I love. Um, well, I'm kind of old school. I like Dateline. Anything with Keith Morrison is my favorite. Um, but you know what? 2020 has really upped their game. Do you guys watch 2020? Uh, like, they have come. I don't know what's going on. They, like, revamped themselves. And their storytelling has gotten so good. Like, I'm really into it. I never was a big fan of it. But now I'm, like, I'm in. Like, I really like it. But that's really all I watch. I always, like go down the ID channel, but I have to I hate <laughs> with like too many reenactments. It's so cheesy sometimes. They drive me nuts. Like the Lifetime movies. Are you hating on Lifetime movies, Bailey? No, I mean, no, because a Lifetime movie is at least a movie, but the reenactments when like someone's talking about it and then Whoa. they show like them reenacting it. I don't know why, but I'm like, okay, this is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, do you? Okay. This. Ah, we're playing. I love it that they throw in. Okay. How do you find all these stories? Uh, for instance, did you find? How did you find the Italian lady that was killing bad? Oh, that's a. I found Julia Tofana. How did I find her? I want to say I came across an article, an old article online. And it was just a little paragraph. There wasn't much information about her. And then I just started Googling and like going from there. Never heard of her, uh, Julia Tofana, but she is rumored to have killed like eight, 600 to 800 men in Italy. And it was like, she's, she was, and some think that she may have murdered Mozart. <laughs> so plot twist. So like, that was fascinating to me, but there was like little information about her. So that story, I really didn't have much to work with, but I still told it anyways. 
but yeah, I usually just kind of start Googling and go from there. I look for stories that are just, that are fascinating to me. I feel like if I'm not interested in it, then you can tell on camera. So it's like, I always make sure that it's, it's uh, satisfying my curiosity first. <laughs> And then I go from there. <laughs> 400 is, what did you say? 400 is 600, 400. That's a bad husband. Mm. Yeah, she was making like poison and she was selling it to women. And they, it looked like makeup. So it was very fitting to my <laughs> murder mystery makeup. And <laughs> women would poison their husbands because they wanted to get out. Um, uh, cause they're very abusive back there. And like women, you know, the wives, they, they own them. So they are like, I want out. They poison them. And then they would just get sick and then there was no way to trace it. So they would just die of natural causes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a time to be alive. That's wild. Oh my gosh. And it's so funny. I did that video maybe a year ago and I just saw an email today that they're making a Broadway musical based on Julia Tofana's story. I'm not trying to give myself props here, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of props here <laughs> for putting that story out there. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it, yes, I, that's it. Have you ever like wanted to do, remake a story based on new information that has come up? You mean like update a video? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Not remake. I mean, yeah. There are um, a couple stories I've done where there have been updates. Like I did one on Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that hot mess, but that's a hot mess of a story. And um, there's been like a lot of updates since then. So I'm just kind of waiting until the court trial starts mm -hmm. and then go from there. Cause I don't want to have to keep making, <laughs> you know? but most of the videos that I've done are like topics that the court like trials already been done. The person's either had died, like the, um, the suspect, the killer, whoever they've died, whatever. That way we can just get closure. I don't <laughs> like stories where there's no, you don't get closure. I feel like we need it right now. Absolutely. <gasps> I mean, yes, that's why that's why they always tell you to watch the end of a scary movie or a thriller, right? So you well, you get some form of closure in this one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we have I we're almost coming to an end of the program. But me, before we ask you the final and last question, uh, we have a special game that me and Steven want to play with you. I guess it's not a game. It's like burning questions. So basically we ask you. For those who don't know who are watching, we ask you like th this versus that, and you have like a second to answer and choose. Okay, I love that. All right, so our first one is Hillary Duff versus Lindsay Lohan. Hillary Duff. <gasps> Norms or Bob's Big Boy? What was the first one? Norms or Bob's Big Boy? Bob's Big Boy. <laughs> I had a whole conversation about this with me. <laughs> Star Wars versus Star Trek. Mm, Star Trek. <laughs> Whiskey a go-go or, or the troubadour? Whiskey a go-go. <laughs> In sync versus Backstreet Boys. In sync. Sunset Strip or Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Hollywood Boulevard. Sunset. Sun uh, Hollywood. <laughs> Eyeliner versus lipstick. Lipstick. Mm -hmm. Tequila or vodka. Both make me want to get, but uh, how about vodka? I could use a Bloody Mary right now. Okay. Who can? <laughs> me, Jane Austen versus Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson. Draft or bottled beer? Mm, bottle. Mm, bottle. True crime literature. Oh man, I got this one. And I can never say this word. True crime literature versus noir literature. Did I say this noir. right? Noir. Noir. True crime. Mm. Italian sub or a torta? Torta. <clears throat> Sounds good for dinner, y'all. Oh, wait, it's me. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Favorite go-to gift. Like the, your favorite gift to give someone if you don't have enough time. Candle. No, that's so boring, but a candle. <laughs> <laughs> go-to gift. Oh, man. Ice cream or cake? <laughs> Ooh, ice cream. My hair. Oh, Monsters versus the Addams Family. <gasps> oh, no. I love the Monsters. Uh, Ren and Stimpy or Cow and Chicken? Ren and Stimpy. 
Elvira versus Angeline. Elvira. <laughs> All I Want for Christmas by Mariah Carey or Last Christmas by George Michael. Oh, no. <laughs> All I Want for Christmas. <sighs> I Mariah. Mariah owns Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> She really does. All right, that was our last questions. I really like this game. I think we learned a lot about you. I can't believe you know. said in sync though. I think me and Steven oh, yeah. said Backstreet Boys. <gasps> no, I think. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm not, that's it. That's no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's see if we have any last questions before um, we decide. Okay, I lost my questions. Did we lose anyone? Um, okay, so. One of the last questions is, are you working on anything new that you can share with us? Um, and is there a possible book in your future? Oh, that's so fun. I would love to do a book, but I don't know what I would do when it comes to a book. <laughs> Get back to me. I'm going to write a book one day. I don't know what yet, but it's being written right now in my mind. And um, possible collab. I do have a collab coming up. Maybe in, I think in May is when we're planning it. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, though. <laughs> I should have double check. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, something is coming. <laughs> I mean, you just got to follow Bailey to figure out what's happening in her life. Yeah, exactly. All right. I think we have more questions. Steve, do you see any of them on here? This, uh, oh, that one's a good one. I get, well, I don't know. Can you talk about it? The J Jesse Hale one? Can we, pop, can we pop it up? Our background, our background people. We feel so important. I don't know if they can find it. I'll read it. Do you do you want do you did any of you find it? <laughs> so it goes, do you see yourself having your own Hulu or Netflix uh series? And would it be something you're interested in or not? Oh, of course. I would love to. I would love to. But if the opportunity comes, for sure, I would love to. Would it be true crime related or like follow? Oh, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything. Shoot. I don't care if you're in the background. I'm like, hey. <laughs> Whatever. Um, do you see yourself turning, like, um, I cannot, there's the murder, mystery, and makeup, like, into a, like, I can see it turning, but would you consider that, like, turning into a Netflix series or a Hulu series? That would be really cool, I guess, if, the, if it was, like, the right fit. You know, I don't want to, like, lose... You know how sometimes you really like someone and then they become big and they lose that thing that you really liked, right? And it turns yep. into this like, I don't know, TV, PG, like boring, whatever, hot mess, it's too scripted. So if I got to like, if it stayed true to myself and like what I like to do and talk about stuff, then yes. But I don't wanna ever like lose myself, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yes. No PG. We don't want PG. What is it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's like two scripted shows and you're like, this is so dumb. Like I miss the old them. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And then would you do your own makeup line? Um, I think right now, no, only because like the, it's so oversaturated. Like there's so many, there's so many different options when it comes to makeup and I like the idea of doing collabs because it's kind of like, you know, when you know when your friend owns a boat and you get to show up and like bring <laughs> like here <laughs> and you go on, and you're like, woo, I like I love it. This is so fun. And then you get to leave and you get to go home. But the guy who owns the boat, he has to like clean it, take care of it, the maintenance, everything behind the scenes. Like I want to be the friend that shows up, like, woo, and then I leave. So that to me is fun. And I just feel like I wouldn't make a line unless I came out with something that truly like is innovative and different and just, yeah, something I could really get behind. And I just feel like everything is just so blah. And it's just, everything's the same. Like no one's actually trying to be innovative anymore when it comes to makeup. It drives me freaking nuts. Man, so how do you choose like what, I, well, I guess, yeah, I guess my question makes sense. How do you choose what, palette you're gonna use like well I have like my tried and true palettes that I just love and I know that they're gonna work for me and stuff and it really just depends on what look I'm gonna do so I have like palettes that have you know the bright colors to them I have my favorite neutral palette I have my favorite glitters and it's just about finding like what works for you and what you like the best and then just keeping it small I mean 
I just feel like there's like a new palette every week. It's like how many new, how many natural or nude or whatever eyeshadow palettes do you need? Like you don't need them all. Find one that works and stick with it. Be loyal to that one. And yeah, so I just find what works for me and I stick with it. That's yes. As someone who's always trying to wants to buy, because you're like, I mean, yes. At a certain point, you're like, how many red lipsticks do I need? But there's always. I know. <laughs> I know. Trust me. Like I go through stages where I'm like, I'm gonna buy new makeup, and it's like, why did I do that? <laughs> I don't need it. It's like I'm never gonna use it. So I try. I've been trying my best to like be on a no buy and only buy things that like I my ride or die products when I run out of them. So I've been pretty good at that. Cool. All mm -hmm. right. So that comes to an end to our program. We want to thank you so much, Bailey. I, um, you got a few shout out uh, clips and thanking you for being here, uh, comments. And so, um, but yeah, we are very thankful to have you here. And that ends our program. And so we thank you so much for joining the LMA program. Remember to check out our library's online calendar at LAPL.org. And we hope to you all will join us again Thursday, April 1st at 4 p.m. with the Los Angeles Poet Laureate Lee Lynn Thompson. And on Thursday, April 8th at 4 p.m. with the LA Roller Girls. We will see you all next time. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. It was so fun. I, now I just expect you to do your like closing song. <laughs> There is no closing song. I just say bye. I, I was <laughs> intro song. There you go. Your intro bye. song. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>